Real estate. Let's mm. talk about your real estate story. What do you yeah. do real estate wise? What's your uh, history with that? Well, you are much bigger in real estate than I am. So my most of my portfolio. I'm also much bigger in real life than you. You are very tall. <laughs> I'm very awkward extreme, tall. Yeah. What's the yeah. deal with like so many people <laughs> on the internet being giants? I don't know, but it's a thing. It's I, a thing. You know. Yeah. It's not even necessary. It's kind of unfair. <laughs> um, so real estate. Uh, most of my businesses are what I call boring businesses. So they're car washes, laundromats, HVAC, accounting companies, um, typical private equity companies that we buy and we scale uh, or we hold forever, and they cash flow. When it comes to real estate, my portfolio is pretty straightforward. I own a property management company on the long-term side. I want to buy a couple more. I'm working on that right now. I own short-term uh, rental property management companies. And then I own some of the underlying uh, real estate holdings. So I own some long-term rentals. I own some Airbnbs. Um, but I really like the actual companies that manage those as opposed to the underlying uh, real estate assets. And that's just because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a cash flow hussy. Like mm -hmm. that's just what I want. I want yeah. as much cash flow as possible. And you just can't can't get as much cash flow on individual assets typically as you can on a business for the dollars that you put down yeah. on a relative scale. And so, um, so that's what I do in the real estate space. I think uh, one thing that I've been obsessed about lately is thinking about where's the next area for opportunity in real estate. And I know we're going to, we're going to talk about that a little yeah. bit, but I think my, my plan will shift slightly. We own like 24 car washes in Texas, for example. And those car washes we own the real estate for too. Um, and we just got a huge offer for those. Like I think we buy, bought those on average for let's call it seven to 10 X profits. And we're gonna sell them for like 18 to 24 X profits, which is wild. And you've increased the profits, I'm sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah added subscription, yeah. Um, increased the size of the bays, lots of different things. More efficient because we use credit cards, et cetera. Um, but I think I'm a, right now I'm a net seller of almost all real estate. Um, in this market, but I think that'll change. Yeah. So what do you think? I mean, where do, what do you think is headed? Where's real estate headed? Where are the opportunities? Where are the problems? Well, I'd see? be really curious your take on it. But um, the part that I, I'll say the only part that I am eyeing pretty aggressively right now is what's happening in commercial real estate. So I think everybody in your audience probably is aware of the huge number of defaults we're starting to see in commercial real estate. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, I don't know, you can use a crazy market like San Francisco and know that 40 to 50% of those spaces are unrented. And, you know, it would take trillions of dollars to bail out the commercial real estate market. Um, which could actually maybe happen because a lot of it is held by pensions, um, by and large. But I think we are on the edge of a shoe about to drop in the commercial real estate market. And I think it is as bad as 2008, but we aren't paying attention to it because we have layers between us like pensions, et cetera. And we've had this low interest rate uh, market for a very long time. But those loans, you're starting to see them default. You're starting to see BlackRock has defaulted on multiple loads. You're starting to see individual property managers default, um, which they don't even own the assets. They're just, they're just managing them. And so that's an area where I think it will fall. And when that happens, I'm curious to pick up some assets. Mm. Um, so we right now are looking for some space for one of our companies. And I just won't buy in the office space right now because you could convert it and do all of that into homes. Yeah. That's not my area of expertise. I want to wait until the asset at large is much cheaper. Yeah. You know, I think... I think you're 100 right. I think there's a lot of problems in commercial. I think multifamily, depending on the type of debt people get, uh -huh. like multifamily is going to be fine unless yeah. you have really short-term debt and you can't refinance it. That's the biggest right. problem right now. We just talked about that with Justin Donald. That there's, you know, if people have a two-year loan and it's coming up here in four months from now and interest rates are at seven instead of five where you wanted them, you might not be able to refinance. That's a that's a problem, but that's a fairly contained in the multifamily space. The office space, 100 percent agreed we've got a problem, especially in all the big cities. Yeah. Uh, there are, you know, maybe it's going to be a little bit localized, but yeah, San Francisco's just in trouble, just period. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how they're, I don't know how California survives in the next decade. I, I mean, I agree. Well, well, they'll always survive somehow, but it's, it's in trouble. Uh, the office space is definitely a worry. And ironically, I'm actually looking to build an office space in Maui, but there's yeah. zero office in Maui. So I feel okay with that, yeah. but uh, cause it's a supply and demand issue. Right. But w what I see is, is, yeah, commercial is going to struggle for a while. I think you're right. I think there is bailout opportunity because the government doesn't want pension funds to go you know, yeah. under. That's that's American money. Yeah. Uh, and it, things swing all the time, right? Like everything just moves like this. Everything's on a, on a curve. You have industrial does really well and then really bad. You have self-storage does really well and really right. bad. And commercial is just, it's office space especially, is up for... Uh, trouble. Yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe there'll be opportunity. And I think we'll also see a lot of con more conversion. Yeah. Uh, things like, okay, we're going to turn that into, 
because that's hard, right? How do you turn an office into self-storage? It's expensive, it's hard, it takes a lot of knowledge. Great, there's opportunity there because yep. Americans aren't buying less crap, we're That's still buying true. more. So self-storage, I think, has a lot of runway ahead of it, yep. uh, depending again on the market, but it's yeah. gonna be interesting times. Yeah, I agree. You know, the other thing, yeah, speaking of California, I saw a headline the other day, probably just trigger, triggering for me because we own some property there, but <laughs> it was like they want you to pay your electrical utilities based on your income as opposed to usage. Really? <laughs> I just thought, what's yeah. next? Yeah, At least you guys no. are creative. Yeah, um, yeah, they're grasping right oh now. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. yeah. Well, I remember about a year ago, I was saying on some podcast somewhere that California is in trouble and uh, is going to, you know, have... I didn't say bankruptcy, but I said, you know, I think they're going to have material issues. And this is when California was in a big surplus. Yeah. And people were like, look at the numbers. No. And I'm like, you guys, we have to look forward in the future slightly. Uh, I think people keep forgetting second and third order effects. But with 10% of the population actually being the, the main payers for 80% of the yeah. tax bill, when those top 10% leave, yeah. you have material change in a, in a uh, city, state, within a very rapid period, aka one year. And, uh, and that's what we've seen in California. And I think why Texas is booming. Yeah. But, you know, I think you're right. There's going to be a lot of opportunity, especially for people that don't have an investment hangover. So if you haven't done a bunch of bad investments yeah. the last however many years, 10 years, you're probably sitting pretty. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I also, you know, I think why I'm so um, positive on, on buying boring businesses, and I don't really care what people do. I think whatever you want to learn as your area of expertise. Yep. Um, I like businesses because you can have so many variations of them. But why I like businesses is because inflation happens. Well, you increase your prices. Um, you know, you uh, have a problem with access to certain types of um, you know, uh, things that you need for your business, supplies in the underlying business. Well, that's just one revenue line of yours. It's very seldom do we have the whole supply chain, you know, that is broken. With businesses too, you can actually materially increase your profits and your total revenue. Whereas with real estate, you can do that with value add, obviously up front, but it's hard to do continuously year after year Correct. where you could 100x your business. Now there's more risk in business, I think. They could go away. It's not a hard asset always. Yeah. Um, so two sides of the coin, but I'd really like to see people have both. So if you're a realtor right now, I think you're crazy for not having a property management business yeah. because that property management business, its revenue kind of goes like this. You know, you see it just tick up slowly while your real estate portfolio, if you're transactional, let's say, where you're out there buying and selling houses and flipping them like a lot of people were, your holdings go like this, right? And so I had a lot of friends lose tens of millions of dollars or all of their wealth in 08 because they were transactional real estate brokers. And, uh, and I think you should either hold it like you guys do where you're investing and collecting the rent or buy a property management company or something that could be a satellite to your core real estate or transactional yeah. business. Um, and it doesn't have to be very hard. And so that's a big thing that I'm focused upon.